Hi, good evening. It's Saturday evening. Nine o'clock. <laughs> in the evening, of course, not in the morning. And I have got two dogs who are very, very whiffy tonight. If you've ever had dogs, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if I lit a match in here, I think we would go boom. <laughs> Oh, well, what am I wearing today? I'm wearing my chiffon, whoops, caftan, caftan top thing. My beads, I think they're from Ephra. And some navy blue pants. <laughs> and I hope you're going to join me because I've got a rum and cola with vanilla and spice. It's about 5% alcohol, but it's only a small drink, so... There won't be any singing and dancing today. <laughs> Tonight, I should say. Cheers. I think I should have said the cheers first, but that's by the by. That reminds me of a story. We went to um, Tenerife one year. And we got in with some Swedish girls, I think they were. And <laughs> every time... <coughs> you lifted up your drink to have a drink, they would come across the table and go, cheers, cheers, cheers. It was fun at the beginning, but by the end of the evening, you were scared to take a drink. <laughs> you were trying to sneak one, you know, like so they wouldn't see you. <laughs> In the end, we had to leave that bar and go somewhere else because, and all the way, I was with my friend that year because my marriage was breaking up, another story, but, and, um, all the way when we were walking back to our hotel we kept saying cheers cheers <laughs> it might not seem funny now but it was really funny at the time and when you have a couple of drinks of course it's hysterical isn't it <laughs> so we were walking down this by the sea you know going cheers cheers <laughs> and everybody gave us this hoo -hoo look you know as if say hoo -hoo. where have they been they must have been on the drink and we'd actually only had two <laughs> But you don't need many when you're in high spirits, do you? You know, one drink can make me giddy these days. Well, oops. It's in the trouble with this caftan is you sit on the sleeves. And I've got Poppy here. <laughs> There's no show without Poppy. No Gigi, of course, because it's weekends. And the family have gone out. They've gone to somebody's 40th birthday party. So I've got left with the two rather smelly, windy dogs which I really am looking forward to. There, you heard it, didn't you? <laughs> Sky just does them silently, but they get, they hit the mark here. Yeah, believe me, they hit the mark. Anyway, what did I do? Oh, well, I don't know what happened to the free gift. I got a, Crochet book while I was out shopping. There was a free gift anyway with a big button like that, a huge button. And um, two little ones that matched it. Well, you'll see them in here. I must have put them down in the other room. This is the free gifty thing that came with it besides the buttons. And that was the size of the button, whether you can see it or not. I'm always conscious if I put it too far, do I put it right near the camera and you can't see for the lights yeah? so it's a big button like that so that was one hat then it's got the mittens and the little buttons are on the mittens if you see that or you can use the big button to go on a striped neck warmer that matches the <laughs> Let one with that matches the uh, fingerless gloves, fingerless mitts. Well, that's a better or a bigger picture. That's the size of the button. It's a wooden one, in case you're wondering. Or that's another button. Another button? Another hat with a button. You could choose to do that one. Is there anything else in this booklet, I say? Oh, yes, there's a bag. But it does look a bit of a droopy bag, so it's not doing anything for me, let's say. Right, oops, this one is simply crochet. 
and I'll have to put my glasses on to tell you what uh, edition it is. It's the latest one, I think. It's uh, issue 52. They don't tell you any months, years, whatever. They just say issue 42. 52, sorry, I beg your pardon. That's the front cover. And the jacket that's on it, of course, has got the big button. So you can either use it on the big button on there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Deary me. Right, let's have a look what's in it today. I do like that. That's a, not in it. It's a pattern from uh, King Cole. Yeah, I quite like that one. That pattern. Let's try if I can find it. Hmm. Not keen on the others, but I do like that little top. Uh, this is telling you it's called Hooked. Um. This is north of the border, that's like that rag wool, whatever you want to call it, but it's in tartan. You know the big wide thing that you make uh, mats with and bags with, yeah. And then this is Lord Von Schmidt, who does all these uh, vintage crochet things. Um, what have we got else? Oh, it's just tell you various you know, uh, new yarns that's coming out, I think. And put your skills to good use by contributing a square to blankets for the homeless. I know there's a lot of you doing uh, things for charity and stuff like that. I applaud you and I wish I could be doing it, but I haven't. Right, this is Granny's Not So Square. This is like a bolster. That reminds me of our holiday in Paris. We were staying in this hotel that looked like Peter Sellers, you know, the Pink Panther. I mean, Inspector Clouseau should have been leaping out at any moment. He had a really old-fashioned lift that was all raw iron that you could, like, see out of it, you know. There was no glass around it or anything. It was just raw iron. And he had to go up and it was going... <laughs> and then when we got upstairs into the bedroom, it was the weirdest bedroom I've ever, ever seen. And it had little shutters that looked out onto this street and the street was so narrow you felt you could shake hands with the people across the road and uh, I mean we found out later we were in the red light district we we're in the Pigalle <laughs> so much for a budget holiday in Paris um, that's a, another one we were fascinated though when breakfast came we got these croissants which, of course, back then we'd never heard of. And we got this massive cup. It was like a soup bowl with handles with hot chocolate in it. And when we looked around, everybody was dipping the croissants into this chocolate drink. And I'm thinking, this is a bit strange. <laughs> you know, you could tell we haven't been abroad, but... Um, that's Little Hearts. It's just like a, a decoration, is it? A trio of hearts hanger can be done in an evening or two. Yeah. Then we've got the circular granny cushion. If you can hear anything, by the way, my washing machine's on. My daughter-in-law put it on before she went out. And something else is clanking against the glass. Those are buntings. And then this is like a wall hanging that's pockets that you can put your bits and bobs in. I wouldn't make that because I'd stuff it full of stuff and they'd all be swinging forward. You know, if it's a container, I have to stuff it as full as it'll go, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's how to make crochet chains. You know, in the way we used to make the paper chains when we were kids. I don't know whether you did or not, but we did. Poverty, you know what I mean? Can't afford proper chains of the, for the house, so you make your own out of bits of paper. Now, that would be nice if you didn't have that silly pocket -y thing. I don't know whether you can do it without that, but I don't like that pocket. The actual jacket is very, very basic, but it looks very nice. I'd have to study to see if I can do it without that big pocket. 
Now this is so cute. Again, not an amigurumi person, but that's so cute, isn't it? Ali the alpaca, is it called? I don't suppose you're going to make it in alpaca because it would be rather <laughs> expensive if you did. And also not suitable for a child. Lots and lots and lots of adverts. Now I do like those because you know I'm a bit of a hippie. I do like those. You've only got to stick a fringe on anything and I'm sold, you know. Mm, I'd buy anything if you stuck a fringe around it. I just love fringes. Some people like pom-poms, but I like fringe. Um, Twinkie's Journal from Japan. I'm not sure quite what she's making there. Oh, the washer's having a fit there. Sounds like Concord taking off. A sky full of stars. It's all beaded. I have tried beading, but it's just not something I have to do. Now I thought, oh, I love that. I really like that. And then I found out it was bobbles. You know, you have to put, um, working round the post, you've got to do yarn round the hook four times, yeah? Yarn round the hook, bring it up. Yarn round the hook, bring it up. Four times. And then draw a hook through the first eight loops Yarn round hook and go through the final two loops. So just the thought of that gives me the shudders. I cannot get them through evenly. I've always got one big loop sticking out somewhere. This is called A Little Bit of Heaven, a little box of crochet. It's a, an advert for something. Little box of crochet founder Amanda Bloom. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what was at the beginning of here. Um, which I've missed altogether, and I saw it when I was looking through before. But I've missed showing it to you. There, my necklace, that's in yellow. Not in purple, it's from Lana Boo. If you go on um, Etsy, it's L-A-N-A -A and B-O-U, Lana Boo Creations. Mm -hmm. So that's that's it, that's the necklace that I've got, but mine's purple. Right, where was I? Oh, I was doing this little box of heaven, whatever it was. Not sure what it is. Um, cable guy. You can't see it very well, I can't see it, and I'm looking at the picture. It's apparently it's a cable scarf. But it does tell you how to do the front post and the back post and how to do the cables. That's Ice Ice Baby. It's a basket and a cushion. Not a, yeah, basket and a cushion. No, it's not. It's a basket and... Yeah. Oh, oh. I told you I was brain dead, didn't I? I'm proving it now. And that's showing you how to do the, that stitch. Quad double crochet. And you have to make these little boxes, whatever they are. Oh, they're baby blocks. Remind me a bit of that, uh, that game we used to play where you had to keep twisting all the colours around. I think of its name now. A baby card here. I always want to put more buttons down it and an edge in. To me, it looks unfinished when there's nothing around the neck and there's nothing down the front. It's just me though, isn't it? Just me. Um, oh, this is just showing you what alpaca yarns are available. Um, oh, nine pounder ball, put my name down. Put my name down. £7.95. Oh, £15.50. I'll have a sweater for. Yeah. Like not. Oh, these are showing what people have made, you know, from previous issues. And then this is telling you how to make a necklace, statement necklace, with a bit of beading and a bit of 
but it's not all crochet because it's telling me how to put the beads on with pliers so that lets me out right away I'm not artistic right I think that's about it now crochet so says tell you they always show you how to crochet don't they by the back cool clusters have a go at the chunky hexagon And that's what's going to be in next month. That's Poppy who's snoring, by the way. And this reminds me of Sean. Sean's crafty corner because she's doing a Santa Claus, I think. And this is a, a US designer called Tamara Kelly, who's designed this very, very open work uh, pattern. It's actually a free pattern. You can find the free pattern for the uh, Ariana, is it called? No, Amara, sorry, I can't read. Amara Shaw. It's uh, on the Moogly blog. It's Tamara's blog at, at www.moogly. Mooglyblog.com. It's the Amari Shaw. A M A R A. Very, very open work. I like open work uh, pineapples, but it's also got beads on, I believe, yeah. And those are nice colours, aren't they, to use for a throw, not that I ever make them. Well, I'm still not progressing much on uh, my niece's... Uh... Oh, I did sew up the baby cardigan, although it's not blocked. Finished up, I did sew it up, but it needs blocking because the bottom keeps curling up. So that's for my uh, great niece. I had to turn the sleeves up because they're rather long. But it does need blocking, so it'll lie flat. But I stitched it together, put the edging on the front. Again, it needs blocking, so that it won't curl up. And sewed its button on, so it's looking more finished now. So that's another one finished. Anyway, what am I actually doing? Woo! Can't get down here. I hold my hands up to you ladies. Take my glasses off who make teeny weeny amigurumis. That is what I'm making at the moment. Well, the actual doll, I don't know whether it's having that outfit on yet. It's a, a lovely book, but it's called My Crochet Doll. Oh, now I've got to put my glasses back on again because I can't read the lady's name unless it's in here. Oh yeah, Isabel Kessajan, if you can read it. Oh, hold it there. Oh, it's there, you can read it on the back left. It's a fabulous crochet doll pattern with over 50 cute crochet doll clothes and accessories. And it does have quite a lot. But I have spent quite a lot of time. And all I've done so far is half of the head. I think actually that's the bottom of the head because I've got to do the top, the scalp bit yet. So. The scalp bit and the hair, I've decided, will be in this lighter brown. <coughs> Whether she's having plaits or not, I don't know, because there's about seven different hairstyles you can do. So all I've done so far is that, which looks like a little basket, <laughs> little bowl, but it's part of her face. It's her face at the bottom half. And one skinny leg. I mean, this is tiny to me. I had really had trouble going round that thing. So, I mean, how do you make these little teeny weeny amigurumis? I have no idea. That's one leg. And then I couldn't find me, <laughs> my stitch marker. I couldn't be bothered going looking for it. So I've got a, a great big uh, clip on it that's meant for jewellery or, no, it's meant for um, key rings. So I've got one leg and one part leg. I think when I've done these, I've got to join them together to do the body bit. So I've no clue how tall she's going to be or how big she's going to be. But she seems to have rather a big head in comparison to her tiny little legs, yeah. Oops, sorry about the top of my head. But she does have like little legs and a big head and boots. But you can make all different kinds of hairstyles where they all go. I don't know whether I'm any good at plaits, so I'll have to think about this. Oh, where's it gone now? 
Oh, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, those are the dolls you can make. And you can do them with all different hairstyles and all different colours. I mean, that looks nice, but I'm not sure whether I could secure it. So I think she's probably going to have stitch parting down the middle and plaits. Then if she undoes them, at least my niece can flat them up again, yeah. I mean, the, the, the little girl's only two, is she two and a bit? Yeah. She's not three yet, so I don't want to, uh, you know, give her something that she's not going to be able to manage. And let's, yeah. There she is. It's just how to do all the underwear. I won't be making the suitcase. Something just fell off the top of the washing machine. It's probably the laundry basket. You know, you can make her evening things to wear to go to bed with. Uh, that's when she goes on holiday. But as I say, I'm not making suitcases. You can even make her a lilo and... Uh, oh, the dog sat on there. It's wonder she doesn't turn the TV on. She's sat on all the control panel there. That's in the rain. Now my daughter-in-law puts the laundry basket on top of the dryer, which is on top of the washing machine. And my washing machine, it gets sort of unevenly loaded. So that it does the, like, dance around the kitchen bit. And then it starts to shake like that. And then anything that's on top comes flying off. As we found out many times when we put things on it. That's in the country. But even though it does it every time, my daughter will puts it back on top again. Not saying a word, not saying a word. Yeah, there she's going to school. I haven't decided which outfit. I'll make her a couple of outfits, but I'm not making all of them, of course. Yeah, you can have baking days. And I am not making those cakes. I'm having enough trouble with this doll. She might like a super one. Thankfully, I think it's only got eyes, this doll. Um, I don't think it's got a ma Oh, it's got a little nose in the same colour. But it's only like stitches going across and two eyes. So I don't have to do many features. I don't think it's got a mouth. No, it's mouthless. <laughs> yes, so I hold my hand up to you. There's a lot of you out there who make amigurumas that are so big. I'm struggling making a doll that's like this big. <laughs> so don't hold your breath for the next video because I don't think it will be finished. I think I'll have gone back to the cardigan. <laughs> oh, it's 20 past nine now, so I've been on here for 20 minutes, so that's probably quite enough, really. Sure you're bored of me on a Saturday. You've got plenty of other things to do than watch me. I'm still ploughing on. I've only got how many days left? Is it about something daft like six or seven? No, I think there's eight days left, is it, of Christmas? It's not going to be enough for what I've got to do. <laughs> there was so much more I wanted to do that's not going to get done at all. Cheers. So I'm going to put the TV on now. See if I can watch Miss Fisher and her murder mysteries, if it's still on. I was happily watching it when they came in and had the dinner before they went out. So. Of course, I had to stop watching Miss, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. So, but I'm going to go back to see if it's still on. <laughs> oh dear. Nothing could be heard but the gentle sound of Poppy snoring. We've got them in, they're like in bunk beds today. They've got one on the floor. That's Poppy. She's snoring. And Sky's the one who's sitting on the remote controls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, 
nothing much to report really. I went shopping and considering it's not anything even near Christmas yet, it was absolutely full in the supermarket. Our supermarkets are not like um, you know, your big American supermarkets. Um, they just mostly sell food and a few bits and bobs and things like that. But you'd think that food's going out of fashion, honestly, the way they do it. I always try to get everything in. I'm going to sort out my freezer and use or sort out what I'm not going to use in the freezer and so make a bit of space to put some stuff in. So that I can have plenty of stuff in for Christmas. But they're, not, they're only old clothes for one day or I think they're even open on Boxing Day. So I don't know why I'm worrying really because I go to me, me sister-in-law. You know, my late brother's house, I go there for Christmas Day. So that I can see my two nieces and the husbands and the children and things like that. But I usually come home quite early. Because I like to watch Catch the Mid... <laughs> call the Midwife. Do you know, I've, I've only drunk about that much out of this already and I can't even speak. I don't think you will ever, ever see me drunk on here because you just won't. <laughs> two sips and I'm already feeling giddy. <laughs> when I was younger, of course, I could drink. But not when I was very young. I never drank at all until I was mother, I think. I think it was Arian that drove me to drink. No. I just had the odd, you know, eggnog or something at um, Christmas or the odd baby sham or cherry bee or something like that. I don't come from a family of drinkers really, which is rather funny because my brother turned out to be an alcoholic, but I don't know where he got that from because my mum goes very drunk, or she used to, bless her, she's not here now, but one little tiny glass of sherry, and I mean a tiny glass, they used to be really small. And they were shaped like that, you know, so they only held about two teaspoons of sherry. And um, one of those, and she was, oh, I've got all up now. Oh, oh, the room's going round. Oh, that picture's crooked. <laughs> she had to go to bed. She had to go to bed. And my dad was the same, really. He'd like a whiskey. And he drank it with just a bit of ice or a bit of dry ginger he'd have it with, but... He was never much of a drinker. A couple of whiskies and he was really, you know, happy, jolly. You could tell he was a bit drunk. So I don't come from a <laughs> family that drank, fortunately. I mean, I've seen some of my friends who come from families who drank and gambled and smoked and that. And it contributes to being a really poor house. You know, I mean, we were poor. But we always had enough of everything because my mum and dad didn't smoke drink or gamble or anything like that. So whatever little money they had, they did spend it wisely, you know. And obviously the, the house money, rent money or whatever you want to call it. And the um, food on the table. And put a little bit by for clothes and things like that. So compared to a lot of the poorer end of the market, which we were, we were quite rich in some ways you know my friends used to say oh you're so lucky you've got this are oh, you so lucky because they'd go home to nothing in the cupboard and nothing on the table and they'd have to wait till their mum and dad came home from work to see if there was anything being brought in the house and um, you know literally bread and jam or whatever you know and if I'd taken anything out with me when I was playing a sandwich or something they'd be like that looking at me watching me you're going to finish that, you're going to finish that. We you leave me a bit? Uh, you know, you think, oh God, you know. I thought we were poor, but we were never that poor. Never. We always had some food. I'm not saying it was fillet steak or anything like that, because it wasn't. But we always had something in our, you know, in our stomachs. If it was only cheese and onion pie, we always had something to eat. So I suppose we were blessed, weren't we, really, in that way. I mean, I've been quite lucky in my life, really, no matter how poor I've been at any stages of my life, I've always been able to, to feed myself. 
It might be baked potatoes with cheese, it might be beans on toast. I know that tickles you Americans because you're thinking of green beans on toast. But we have like baked beans or beans in tomato sauce. Don't know what you call them. But we have beans on toast over here. Or we have scrambled egg on toast, things like that. You know, there have been times when I've lived on baked potatoes, basically. You know, for a week until money came in. But I've, luckily I've always had money to get the potatoes. I mean, there are some people who don't even have that. But I'm not going to go crazy this Christmas. I'm not one of these people who loads up the trolley with piles and piles of stuff. Dozens of mince pies that nobody eats, you know. I no longer make a Christmas cake or buy one. I don't buy Christmas pudding anymore. Um, unless I buy a little individual one, just for me. Um, no, I don't go mad anymore. My one thing that I do like is I like to treat myself to a nice box of biscuits. You know the chocolate luxury biscuits that cost a small fortune that you don't have usually because, you know, they wouldn't last two seconds in this house. But I do like to treat myself. And even though I'm a diabetic, I do like to treat myself to a really nice box of chocolates. It doesn't have to be a big, massive box of chocolates. But I used to remember when I was a kid, I used to love those big boxes of chocolates. They were massive. They were only thin like that, they were only one layer. But they had a padded silk top with flowers on or kittens on or something and a big satin bow. And I always used to think, oh, that's the height of luxury was to have one of these Christmas. You know, my dad would or my mum would save up and would get one, you know. And I used to love that box. I always saved that box. And biscuits used to come in, didn't they, in a proper tin. Not this cardboard stuff they have nowadays, but a plastic. Proper tin. And I used to love to save. And they always had, like you say, flowers on them, or country cottages or something like that. And I used to love to keep these boxes and tins and put my little treasures in them, you know. My little treasures would be like little Dolly's shoes and things like that, but my little treasures used to go in them. And I still got two in the um, the pantry now. That's got bobbins of thread in and things like that. Still got two tins, and I've got a really old tin that says Saint Bruno Tobacco. <laughs> Used to buy tobacco in a tin like that, and that was my mum's or my grand's button box for years. You know. My gran used to have some lovely old boxes and I don't know what ever happened to them because they probably got thrown away. Because when she passed away there were still my aunties living in the house. And one of my aunties was just not a, how can I put it, sentimental person. You know, she would call it junk or trash or something and she'd throw everything away. She didn't think there was use for anything, she'd throw it away. And, um, you know, I can think of these beautiful boxes and that that used to be there. And she also, what I used to be fascinated with was, she had, um, my gran had a um, tea set that was like the willow pattern. And I used to love watching, looking at the big plates, you know, and looking at all these people going over bridges and everything. I mean, they weren't worth anything. They weren't like heirlooms or anything. But they were to me because they're part of my childhood and I never knew what happened to them. She had the big place and then she had the little sandwich place and I think she had teacups as well. But of course I don't know what happened to them. They're not there anymore. I don't know what ever I suppose they get broken, don't they, over the years? Because everyone had a best china tea set. No matter how sort of poor you were, you always seemed to have this china tea set. It seemed to come down through the generation, you know, from great grandma to grandma to mum to, you know, but it didn't come to me because it done got broken by then. But it, and they used to all have china cabinets, you know. That again, they used to be as old as the hills, these cabinets with glass at the front. And they used to get passed down through the family. But we never had one. Um, 
But one of my friends used to fascinate me. She had a cocktail cabinet. I thought that was the height of decadence. When you opened it up, all these lights came on and they lit up all the glasses. I mean, she didn't have hardly anything to drink and eat. It was just glassware. And they had this little ballerina that used to go round and round and round. Oh, and I used to think she was the bee's knees, you know. <laughs> I mean, now it's probably the height of quiche, isn't it? you know what I mean? Or kitsch, whatever they call it. You know, that you have these things. <laughs> I mean, at one time, everybody wanted to put a bar in the corner of their living room. Whether they'd got any alcohol to put in the bar is another matter, but they all wanted this bar in the corner of the living room. It was all the fashion. And, um, but now, of course, it's extremely sort of bad taste, or whatever you want to call it. You don't have them anymore. It's like everybody had that picture, didn't they, of the woman. Was she a Chinese or Japanese woman? Wearing this... Um, what they call them a Chong Sam, those dresses that have the split colours. I think they call them Chong Sam. Yeah, but everyone had the corner of it, had this picture. I think she was Asian. I can't remember the And of course, the plaster ducks flying across the wall, you know. <laughs> and when people started going to Spain at first, they all brought back the bull and the bullfighter. We had a crinoline lady. We had her in the window for a long, long time until her dress faded, so we had to get rid of her in the end. She just looked very, very tatty. Sorry about that. But I've had a bit of a... Well, I was coughing earlier on and then a bit of my dinner went down the wrong hole, as we say. I don't know how there's more than one hole, but it goes down the wrong hole. You know what I mean? It makes you cough because... Feels as though it's going in your lungs. Mm -hmm. And since then I've been coughing. But I'm sure I'll be fine. Anyway, I'm going to go now and, uh, like I said, try and catch up with Miss Fisher's murders. I'm try and do a bit more on this amigurumi doll thing. I've got arms to do and they're even thinner than legs. Oh, I don't know how you do these things. I really don't know how you do them. You've got all my admiration, the people who do these things. I would rather crochet a sweater any day than make one of these flipping things. Looks like a little bowl, doesn't it, to put your eggs in? Because <laughs> you have to do them really tight, don't you? Otherwise, you know, the, the stuffing comes through them. With it being for a little one, I've got to make sure it's tight and there's no holes in it, yeah? So it's double knitting, or your number three yarn, uh, on a three millimetre hook. So, I shall persevere, I shall carry on going, but don't expect it to be finished when I do my next video. I am hoping that Sue's going to call sometime this week. I've got her a little something for a present, but I can't tell you because she might be watching. And she won't be able to open it until Christmas. <laughs> So we're all going to keep you all in suspense. I'll tell you what it was after Christmas. <laughs> I'll tell her she has to bring it back and show you. <laughs> oh, righty hell. I'm going to go and I think I might treat myself to a couple of sweeties, candies or whatever you want to call them. I can only have a couple because of me being diabetic. I just have to dole them out very carefully. I mean, at one time I used to sit and dip, 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 but now, not only is it the weight problem, but also, you know, the sugar level and everything. I've got to think about and watch. But I've not really had anything sweet today, so I think I'm okay to have a couple of sweeties. So thank you all for watching. Thank you to my new subscribers. Or my new friends, as I like to call you. Thank you to my regular and my ones who've been with me from the beginning. I do think you're all wonderful. And I talk to you. I'm talking to you. That's all I can say. I'm not talking to a camera. I'm talking to you. Yeah. So if you feel like I'm talking to you, I am. You're all my friends and I value you all. You're great people. And um, I hope you're all going to have a lovely time this Christmas. 
And if you're not going to have a lovely time this Christmas, then go and find something that you like to do. And do it on your own. You know, if you're one of those people. I spent many Christmas on my own. Many, many Christmases on my own. And I refused to feel sorry for myself. I refused to be downhearted. I would just get something nice, because in pre-diabetic days, get myself a nice box of chocolates, treat myself to a bottle of wine, or something that I'd like to drink. Put something nice on the TV, or in those days it was videos. Put a video on, put some Christmassy music on, sit and do my knitting and my crochet, and then forget the rest of the world. It's a state of mind. If you think, oh, woe is me, I'm going to be terribly miserable, I'm on my own and there's nobody going to call, and I'm feeling so sorry for myself, then you will have a miserable Christmas. Mm. I had the first Christmas I had was miserable. Because, you know, I knew my ex was having a whale of a time with his new partner and everything like that. But you have to get over it. You really do. You really have to get over it. If you're on your own, you have to get over it. It's not your fault that you're on your own. It's nobody else's fault that you're on your own. So just do something that you love doing. Even if it means going and sitting in the bath with candles and playing some lovely music. Just treat yourself. Put your nice cuddly pyjamas on and your dressing gown on. I've ordered myself a new lounging suit and it's got a little hood on. Guess what colour it is? It's purple. <laughs> Velour. The big zip up the front. So at least it's going to look a bit more decorative than sitting here in my pyjamas, isn't it? Mm. But when I was working, I used to come home and I couldn't wait to take off my working clothes. I used to go straight upstairs, take all the makeup off and put my lounging things on. But over the years, of course, I've grown out of them. <laughs> and they've gone very shabby, so they're going to... Well, one's going to go in the bin because it's got a hole in it. But the other one that's too small for me, I'm going to bag up a lot of things after Christmas and they're going to go to the ladies' shelter because I've been buying a few things for myself. Not new things, you know, second-hand things, I'm not proud. Um, just recently, so the wardrobe is looking a little bit too crowded and there's things in there that I'm not going to wear again because I'm not going to fit into them. And it's no good keeping them in the hope that I will fit into them because I won't. And if I do fit into them, I probably wouldn't want to fit into them because I would probably want to buy something different, if you know what I'm saying because they've been there a few years. So I'm going to be ruthless after Christmas. I'm going to do a lot after Christmas, aren't I? I'm going to pare down my yarn stash. I've got quite a few people that I know who are doing things for charity. So because I haven't got time to do things for charity, I'm going to contribute by giving the, them some yarn. And if you're abroad, please don't ask me to send you any because it's not that I don't want to send you any. The postage is just too much. It's just ridiculous to send things to the US or anything like that. I've had lots of people ask me in the past, you know, will you send me this or can you spare a bit of this and that. I can't spare the yarn, but I can't spare the money. It's going to cost me like £20 or something to send you a few bowls of wool. It's just not not feasible. <laughs> so I, tend, I give it to people in my own country because it's cheaper than postage. Uh, anyway, charity begins at home, doesn't it? I'm terribly sorry for all those people abroad that haven't got money and they want blankets and stuff like that, but I don't have the money to post them, so sorry about that. Anyway, upon that note, I am going to go. I probably won't ask Scully to, to edit this this weekend and I don't like trouble enough, so I'll probably just put it up without the top and the tail. So I'm going to say goodbye. It's goodbye from Sky, goodbye from Sleepy Poppy and Sleepy Sky, and not goodbye from Gigi because he's at home. He was so funny though the other night when I said, Your daddy's here. He went and ran and got in his basket. <laughs> I just said, I'm not going home. I'm not going home. <laughs> he's very cheeky. Bear in mind that he wouldn't be going in his basket all day long, he wouldn't go in his basket. I was trying to do something and I kept saying, go, go sit in your basket, Gigi, for five minutes. Go sit in your basket. 
As soon as the doorbell went, I said, oh, your daddy's here for you. <laughs> Straight in the basket. <laughs> right. Definitely going. Bye-bye from me. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.